Hi and welcome to Horticulture and Homes. Today I'm going to be decanting this um, solid shortening into canning jars so that it will have a longer shelf life. What I've done is heated my shortening in, in my container. My container is a paper and metal uh, container and the paper is foil lined and hot shortening is put into these containers uh, at the factory so on a very low heat I heated my shortening in this container. Then I have hot sterilized jars wait, waiting and ready. And I have this one cup ladle that's been sanitized and I'm going to use that to transfer my shortening. When I was heating my shortening, I, as it began to melt, I used a stainless steel, long-handled stainless steel spoon and broke up that shortening so it would melt quicker. And I'm just going to set this jar up and seal it just like you would if you were um, going to heat can it. Okay, so out of my um, boiling water, I have my lid. I'm going to wipe off any excess that might be around the edge of the jar. Place my lid and the ring. I'm going to sit this over here on this towel to let that cool. I have my rings on the stove and my lids so that they're nice and hot and sterile. Okay, I'm going to finish this can up and then I have another can to melt and I will check back with you later. Okay, here I have the shortening uh, heating and I have this on the lowest setting that I can set um, my burner to. And one of the things that you will want to do is to get that spoon down to the bottom down in there because as that starts to melt that allows the hot oil someplace to go. Kind of create a release valve because you have all this hard shortening on the top. And then now it's starting to soften well. And I'll continue to go around and kind of break this up because that will um, allow it to melt quicker. The less heat that I can put to this, um, the better it'll be more stable chemically that's why you don't want to you want to melt it at a very low heat and not a high heat and you don't want to risk the chance of um, scorching the, the fat either so this will take a while I'll be back and uh, show you the progress in a few minutes You can see um, if you watch real closely, this is the jar that just uh, that just sealed. The other two had already sealed. Uh, I'm still waiting for the shortening to finish melting, but now would be a good time to talk about um, when you are in the process of home canning um, that you need to be very very clean and every all of your surfaces and, and your pots and everything that you use needs um, needs to be sterilized from your your ladle to your rings to your lids to your jars everything needs to be a sterile environment your countertops uh, one of the easiest things to use uh, to sanitize your countertops would be a, 
a 10% bleach solution in water and that works very well um, but bear in mind that once you mix that 10% solution uh, that that water is you know going to be the most effective the first 20 minutes once you mix the water and the bleach together uh, this is information I gained uh, as a horticulture student because we use a 10% bleach solution to sanitize our area um, before we go to propagate plants. Uh, it works very, very well. Even though the smell of bleach may still be there, uh, it's not going to be uh, nearly as effective because once that uh, bleach hits the open air, it will begin to uh, uh, kind of vaporize off and dissipate out into the environment, into the air. So just be sure that you sanitize everything uh, within about that first 20 minutes of mixing your bleach solution. Okay, this is totally melted and it's all ready to go. Okay, I'm just finishing this up. One of the things that I wanted to mention, I've already cleaned the rim of this jar, but when I place my lid on, make sure that you don't press the center of that. And you can see here, this quart isn't quite full, and uh, one of my cans of shortening I had opened and used about a cup of. So had I had two full cans, I would have um, seven, probably seven full quarts out of that. And these cans, um, these are six pound cans that I'm using. Okay, the shortening is all cooled and solidified. I took the rings from the jars, washed the jars, and labeled the top of each jar. The shortening on the right um, has a, the, the shelf life wasn't as long. Its uh, expiration date was uh, November of this year. And the shortening on the left is, uh, the expiration date was January of 13. So that's part of the difference between the, the coloration. The shortening on the right is, uh, is more yellow. Um, and this can had been opened for a number of months, and I'd used about a cup of the shortening. You can see from those two, I think they were six pound cans of shortening, that I wound up with seven jars. And the seventh jar here uh, isn't quite full, but had both cans been totally full, um, I should have gotten pretty much seven full quart jars. So I've labeled these so that I can tell um, when I put them in the jars and also what the can expiration date was um, from, the, from the can of shortening so I can see just how long this will last and in what environment it will last before it goes bad. So this is kind of a test that I'm going to do.